Hey everybody, a lot of our early blooming trees and shrubs are flowering right now and I thought it was important to take you on a little tour because these not only are the first signs of spring here in northern Michigan, a lot of them are also very important to our pollinator population. So I thought I'd take you kind of around, show you what's blooming and give you a little explanation of some of my favorites. This one here is called the Lotus Moon Pearl Bush. And the pearl bush gets its name because as the buds start, you can see they look like little pearls. And then they open up to these beautiful white flowers. And then it gets to be a rather substantial bush as well. It's really quite attractive. And let's see, what else can I show you? We're gonna head on over here. Some of the elderberry. These are in bloom as well. Now elderberry usually grows or blooms on old wood so you want to be careful about trimming and that's the case with all your spring blooming uh, shrubs. Uh, if you uh, hack them down in the fall you're probably cutting off next spring's blooms so the only time you can usually uh, trim a spring blooming uh, shrub or flowering tree is usually uh, right after they're done flowering. That's the best time usually for most of them. So important that you know that so you don't cut off the blooms. These do form into little berries as well later on. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show you one of my favorites. It's down over here. Sorry, we got to jump aisles here. This one is the Mount Airy Fothergilla. Look at those great puff balls in there. And th those flowers, they're just like little bottle brushes, but they're actually kind of more round. And this is one of my favorites because it is truly like a multiple season type of plant. So right now it gets these amazing little flowers on them. And then it turns into a really nice shrub with kind of nice, a nice leaf form and then those leaves turn into the most brilliant colors in the fall. I had done a video uh, in the fall with what I saw in these colors and they were red and orange and yellow. Just stunning. So that's really a, a really good uh, addition to the yard because you get not only the springtime blooms but then you'll also get that fall color and the fall color is intense. Now these here, these are some viburnum. These haven't blossomed yet. This one's, I think, is it Little Diddy? It's a little bit shorter one. These here are the viburnum. These are the old-fashioned snowball bushes. So a lot of people think a hydrangea is a snowball bush, but actually it's viburnum. And viburnums are going to bloom in May. Uh, meanwhile, you have to wait till usually July to get a, a hydrangea. So viburnums, you can see, this is just starting, starts that lime color, and those are going to get bright, bright white. And like I said, that's a traditional snowball bush. Some more viburnums. Viburnums, there's lots of different varieties of them, so you can get all kinds of different uh, flowers and different um, uh, shapes and, and sizes. I like this one a lot too. This is an aronia, I think it's called Lowscape Hedger, and it's just interesting because it has these beautiful flowers. Here's one that's really in bloom, so almost like almost like a raspberry flower with those really bright red dots in the center. But I love the leaves on these because they're kind of a little bit waxy. And then, so this makes a really nice hedge the rest of the year, but then it flowers, you know, all in the spring. And it's it's really just got a really nice look to it. Uh, holds its shape really well. So kind of a nice form there. Over here, I have some yesberries. I also have some over by the, the uh, blueberries. Yesberries are interesting. Uh, it's kind of like a grape meets almost like a raspberry taste or something like that and a blueberry all in one and they have really beautiful leaves and then you can see they have those beautiful flowers that the bees go crazy for and the, the fruit is just it's actually quite tasty some of them are a little bit tart other ones are sweeter so it depends on the variety uh, these here are some of the service berries or also known as saskatoons service berry has an interesting history to its name because uh, they were called service berries because it's usually the one of the first uh, shrubs to flower and so they knew uh, in colder climates that when the service berry started to bloom it meant that the soil had uh, thawed enough so that they'd, um, they were able to do their funeral services for those who had died over the winter. So just a little history on the name of that. Over here you're going to recognize this plant. We have blooming lilacs and this is a bit of a surprise for us because these are plants that we wintered over uh, here ourselves and they quickly went from sticks maybe a week and a half ago to leaves to flowers and this variety uh, I think it's called Centura. Let me double check. Nope that's the bloom ring. Sorry I gotta find a tag. 
Where'd that go? Here it is. Centara pura. And so this one, really early bloomer because usually we start seeing lilacs uh, sometime in the first week of June, somewhere around there. This one's super early. The bloomerang variety is a little bit different. Um, this one's um, gonna get its blooms soon. You can see it's a little bit more like the Korean lilac uh, with a little bit different leaf than the uh, traditional lilac and a little bit darker flower. And this one is nice because it gets a flush of uh, flowers in the springtime and then it reblooms throughout the season with uh, not as profusely as in the spring, but a really pretty one to have. That's the bloomerang. So there's that. What else can I show you? I'm gonna go across the way here because there are several weeping cherries and weeping cherries are just beautiful, beautiful plants because they have those nice delicate flowers. Sorry, let's get this focus going. Let's go this way, maybe. There we go. And just look at how, how beautiful that is. And then this has got that its own shape to it. So just a nice little addition. Sorry, my phone is just really bad about focusing, isn't it? So I always like those. What else do we have? We have got a lot of ornamental trees kind of pulled out. Things still aren't super organized yet, uh, but trees we just take our time on. That one there is a bloomerang on a tree standard. Uh, so it's kind of like a lollipop type tree, I call them. This is an esplained apple tree. That's three varieties of apple on one tree. Uh, and those are gonna start blooming soon. They haven't started their buds yet. Uh, so they, each variety pollinates the others. So you don't have to have multiple trees. Here's a little bit of a teaser plant because it looks like it has these beautiful white blooms. Sometimes it looks like it has pink blooms. Those are actually the new leaves. So when the new leaves come out, they're a completely different color and then they'll mature to a little bit darker color. So you can see how that is. So that's a Nishiki willow or also called a dappled willow. So that's one of those uh, plants that we have that in shrub form and in the tree standard. So that one, I'm getting off topic, but that's a cool one to have. Here's some more of those service berries. So you can see they become full like trees and bushes. So, you know, they're just kind of a nice little addition. Then in the summertime they just look like a regular bush and then they will get the fruit on them and that's it's always a good fruit for especially for jams and things like that so here's also another service berry and then over here are some of the flowering crabs and of course we just love the uh, blossoms on these really beautiful pinks um, there's some that are darker in fact if i go around to the other side i can show you some of those so and this one is a weeping variety uh, but we also have just your standard crabs and then here are some of the peaches and those are in bloom as well so this is the contender peach this is that peach that we always have really good luck with and if as long as the bees enjoy these uh, buds we're probably going to have fruit on it as well this is a pretty good pr uh, fruit producer for us that's the contender peach and i think there's some apricots in there and some uh, plums as well uh, kind of in the mix we don't have all our fruit trees in or down here yet but we're working on it slowly but surely these are some apple blossoms so these are true apple blossoms one thing to know is that uh, the flowering crab apples the pink ones usually they're not pollinators for regular apple trees uh, meanwhile some of the regular white crab apple ones those will be a pollinator for your apple tree so that can be a really good idea so let me see yeah you can see these haven't opened yet but these are the much darker blooms uh this one here is the red pra uh, splendor or red prairie splendor trying to remember yeah red splendor there's a couple other ones there's some up here on the hill now it's a little mucky up here so we're really not encouraging people to wander around up on the aisles but let me just take you i'm going to take you up to the top of the hill and i'll be right back so here's a traditional crab apple just kind of the little white blooms but they're long blooming which makes them good pollinators for other apples so that's always nice and this is one of my favorites of the season uh this is the mayday tree and you can see it gets these really very nice trails of flowers uh, in May. And so it's just really, I, I love this one. And those blossoms, they just go all the way up the tree. In fact, if I come back a little bit, sorry, I've got things behind me, so I don't want to fall over. Let me take you on a little spin. Okay, so there's the May Day tree. That's getting a little dark, so you're not getting a good view of it. But those blossoms are really beautiful. It's like a little string of pearls coming off. And I just, I really like how those look. I like the little tear 
curve there. It's just really nice. Now I'm gonna take you back over by Greenhouse 7. I've got something else I wanna show you. So over here next to Greenhouse 7, we have the strawberries and the rhubarb. We also have the blueberries, and the blueberries have these beautiful little bell-shaped blooms, and the bees go crazy for these things. They've been all over them the last couple of days. And it is a good idea if you have blueberries to have more than one variety because they, you will get more fruit off of a, if you have two different varieties pollinating each other. So that's a nice little uh, factoid for you to, to file away. And then also over here, we have a little surprise. These are our raspberries and blackberries. Those will be blooming soon. But over here, don't tell anybody, there is, oh, this isn't the spot. It must be one of these spots. Sorry, it's over here. I gotta put a do not disturb sign because we do have a little nest. Oh, let's see, can I get you in there? There we go. A little nest with some eggs in it. Come on, focus. So we have a little a little action going on there, so I will put up a little sign to keep people away from it. Hopefully they, they oblige. Some more of the yes berries. Sorry, let's get that focus working. So it's just really beautiful flowers on those. And then I'm gonna go past here, the pearl bushes. I also wanna show you this one. This is the Carol Mackie Daphne. And so Daphne's are known, you know, during the year they have these beautiful bicolor leaves, but in the springtime, look at how it's completely covered in these really nice little, almost lilac shaped flowers. They're nice light pink and I mean, these branches are completely covered. So these are actually coming to the end of their kind of bloom and look at how nice those look so that's the carol mackie daphne so that the plant is a daphne and it's the carol mackie variety and then for my kind of grand finale i want to come over here and show you the rhododendrons so these are rhododendrons that we wintered ourselves and look how they are doing that classic rhododendron let's cover the whole plant with flowers and they're beautiful pink colors and then what i also love looking at is that there's a lot of new growth so all those little um new green uh shoots those are going to all be new branches next year so this is a very happy plant and i'm really excited because sometimes rhododendrons don't do so well in our climate this one we wintered over here ourselves in pots and this is the result after one year imagine what these are going to look like in a couple more so just oh my gosh look at how covered with flowers that is just stunning so anyway i want you guys to get a good look at those as you're making your list of new shrubs and trees that you want to add to your yard remember these spring bloomers because once the summer plants start flowering and showing off a lot of people forget about these and they're so important to our uh, pollinator population and they're so important to our mental health to be able to see those beautiful buds uh, early in the season after snowy winter so remember pollinators have just made either a really long trip or had a really hard winter and they're hungry and hey we've been stuck in the cold for so long uh, we need this bright spot too so make a list of these plants because like i said everybody forgets about these uh, spring bloomers uh, when it comes time to summer and fall. So make the list and add these to it. So I'll talk to you guys all very soon.